Hi everyone, I'm Jennifer Zarate and you're watching CRN TV. I'm here with Peter Tran, Chief Information Security Officer at Infersight, to talk about Wednesday's riots in Washington, D.C., which included the United States Capitol being breached during the ceremonial counting of the electoral votes. Thank you for joining me, Peter. I appreciate you having me. And it's a pleasure to have you on. Regrettably, under these unfortunate circumstances, as we saw what happened at the nation's capital. So from a cyber perspective, where did you see the breach happen as you saw the riot unfold? Well, as I was watching it streaming in real time on my monitor, um, I became extremely concerned once the physical breach happened at the turnstiles, meaning those areas where people would badge in and out and the, those electronic sensors happen and the gates come up and down, that's where it became a pivotal point where systems became involved. So it became physical to systems. So that's the demarcation point when that the doors were stormed and the sensors were triggered. And this could have been much worse. So what needs to be done to double down on cybersecurity for the nation's capital, not just at the physical level, but in terms of our nation's cyber defense? So what, what needs to happen here is the time between the doors being stormed and the sensors triggered, when, when it became uh, a systems issue, that should have triggered a cyber uh, lockdown per se, right? We should have had the monitoring and early detection up and, and running such that you see the kind of indicator of compromise that we call it. So when the physical indicator of compromise happened, we should be actioning the cyber precautionary measures, especially during a joint session of Congress when the electoral certification process was happening. That was probably the perfect storm for any uh, emergency situation to have been tested at that moment. Now, what are the implications from a cyber breach perspective with Congress in session conducting the official state-by-state -state certification at the time of the riot? When you have that happening, the, the, the main concern here is um, a physical breach happens and essentially when that happens, uh, your systems are extremely at risk. So we have a joint session of Congress happening and those physical certified envelopes are sitting in plain view. That's one aspect. And you should have a backup uh, digital aspect of that, not just for um, authorization purposes, but for what we call the, the AAA. It's the access, authorization, and authentication. So in the case that those were taken, you can still have a fallback. So what we call business continuity and disaster recovery. So those are the top of mind key areas that triggered for me when seeing this breach happen on a physical level. So what does this ultimately mean for the channel and the vendors and solution providers that support the federal government? So in this complex web of procurement within the federal government, the federal government has the highest percentage um, of procurement in the nation that they depend on the channel and the vendors, both technology and staffing wise. Um, this is a, a clear early warning shot uh, for the channel and the vendors that support the channel to now come together and look at it, not just from a point solution perspective, because the federal government procures by uh, a solution area. And then that solution area is provided. But the bigger strategic view is very important that the solution providers in the channel should really start to think about coming together and communicating more. Look at the bigger strategic solution. In this case, for the capital, let's look at both the physical solution, the cyber, and the integration points that need to happen more closely in order to have this type of uh, incident not happen again. And can you talk about the role of social media and how Wednesday's riots unfolded? Social media is by far one of the most powerful channels, I would say, uh, uh, in the world. That being a communication medium that becomes a force multiplier. So when you flip this on its head and what happened on Wednesday was um, as the physical breach happened, as the escalation happened and the rioters and, and, and it was um, and, and the stakes were extremely high with the joint session of Congress, there needed to be a way to end up buffering down the risks or tamping down the risks. So what happened with social media, you actually had a very wonderful thing happen. You had the technology providers within the channel. When I said the channel, you had a number of big tech that came together to really communicate and say, what can we do now in real time to help address this urgent situation? And in that case, they did communicate and they did make an executive decision 
to then lock down those communication channels such that you wouldn't have continued escalation through those communication channels, not only in um, the United States, but globally as well. But that, that really helped a um, command and control perspective from a, um, a technology uh, channel perspective. So that was a wonderful thing that happened. The power of a tweet today, am I right? <laughs> Absolutely, the largest, uh, the biggest force multiplier. Well, Peter, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today. You're absolutely welcome, thank you.